Hello. This week has been designated National Grief Awareness Week. The Archbishop of Canterbury on the was on the television talking with the Chief Rabbi about his own grief at the loss of his daughter as a baby many years ago. He talked about how he and his family still remember her and talk about her with love and tenderness. National Grief Awareness Week is about trying to raise awareness of grief at the loss of a loved one, when often people want to brush it under the carpet. Some people, if they haven't s suffered the loss of a loved one close to them, may feel uncomfortable with grief and not know what to say or how to deal with it, whether it is when they suffer a bereavement or if it is a friend, neighbour or work colleague. Some people have told me how, when they have had a bereavement of someone close to them, how other people avoid them and don't know what to say. They find it awkward and embarrassing. As a church, we need to think carefully about our responses to those who are grieving. Everyone's grief is different, and as the Chief Rabbi said, if anyone says they know exactly what someone is feeling after the death of a loved one, then that is not true. Some people love to talk about their loved one who has died, whereas others may not. However, we do need to be ready to listen, to offer care and compassion, and to allow the other person to talk if they want to, and to offer ways in which they may remember their loved one. This is why we offer such services as Time to Remember in November. This year, Death has been a news item every day because of the coronavirus. We have news reports every day about how many people have died, how many are in hospital, and graphs showing the number of cases falling or rising. It has been sobering and a time when many people will be confronting their own mortality in a way which they may never have done before. Jesus knew what it was like to suffer the loss of a loved one. He wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. He knows what it's like, as the famous Christmas carol puts it, and he feeleth for our sadness, and he shareth in our gladness. This year the Church of England is using the phrase comfort and joy as the logo for all the Advent and Christmas services. Taken from another carol, it expresses what many people need to hear at this time of the year comfort after all we've been through this year, comfort in the good news of Jesus' birth, who came and lived and died and rose again so that we can have peace with God and be sure of our salvation, and joy at the celebration of our Lord's birth, at the joy of being with God and of God being with us in the face of Jesus. In this second week of Advent, we have two candles lit on our Advent wreath. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise and hope found in your Son, Jesus. We thank you that because of Jesus, we can know both comfort and joy in your presence. As we prepare for Christmas, May we be ready to recognise your presence with us and celebrate with joy and gladness in our hearts and lives. Amen.